Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. So we are going to chat with Prince in the afterlife. Prince has a whole playlist here at Above Life Channel because he was the inspiration. He was the one that was really encouraging me to share more of the dialogues and conversations that he and I had been having in the afterlife and share that with other uh, other famous afterlife celebrities, give their fans, give people the opportunity to understand their insights f from a spiritual perspective. So today we're going to talk with Prince. So let's talk. How are you doing? We haven't talked on camera for a long time. I feel like it's been a while anyway. I'm not sure. It may have just been last month, but he says, you're busy. I am busy. I am busy. That's no excuse though. He says, that's no excuse. Like, I know, I know. You are such a boss, you know? Yeah, he says, yeah, well, I'm getting to be the low man on the totem pole now, he says. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. You know, I always have love for you. I totally appreciate your support and your insight. Let's talk about some, some things. Let's talk about um, advice. Maybe you can give us some advice, give some advice for people. Um, let's do, how about relationship advice? Would you like to do that, Prince, in the afterlife? <laughs> he says, I don't know if I'm the one to do that. I know, I know, which is why it's kind of funny. So let's do it. Let's talk about relationship advice. Um, what would you say in, from being a former person, what would you say is the most difficult thing about relationships? What's the most difficult thing? He says, everything, doing things wrong, you know, getting it wrong, he says. But not really knowing what the other person wants, you know, not, uh, not taking the time to have a real understanding about what that is, what that means. You know, it's so important, he says, it's so important to uh, recognize that there are two people in a relationship and Although sometimes the emotions change and, you know, the, the magnetism, it fades, you know, the attraction can fade, but over time, it's like, you need to ask yourself the question of what do you really want? You know, what do you want? And I think, um, he says, I think you have to know yourself better in order to be really in relationships, to be really fully, he says, in a relationship. So that sounds like, that's pretty profound. That sounds like you've learned that from lifetime, from this lifetime. Yeah, he says, uh, you'd hope I'd learn something, right? We all have learning to do, he says. We all have learning to do. Mm -hmm. We do, I agree. He says, putting your own needs above someone else's, I think is a natural human behavior. I think it's uh, instinctual to want your needs to be met. But I think in order to be really good at a relationship, you've really got to understand that there are bigger reasons to be together, you know, in a, in a marriage, in a union. And it's your, your soul is really looking for that, that intimate connection. You want someone to know you as God made you, you know, deep inside. You want someone to just know you. I think that's kind of high expectations. High standards, perhaps, maybe that's a good word to use, high standards. Interesting, you're so reflective. You're so reflective about this. So Prince, is there the concept of, let's talk about the concept of soulmate and twin flame. Is there a difference between the two? He says, yes, oh yes. He says, Bridget, you know that. I'm like, yes, I do. But let's tell the people, the viewers, Prince, want to hear from your mouth, <laughs> your light. <laughs> tell, tell us about the difference between soulmate and twin flame. Talk to us about that. A twin flame is something that is 
sort of the ultimate, the pinnacle of achievement when it comes to heart uniting, when it comes to the, uh, the essence of people really becoming one because you were one in the first place. In the very beginning, you were one. You were always one and you're sourcing, constantly sourcing people to find this, this, this match. And I'm not talking about, oh, we're a fit, we're compatible, but I'm talking about this, there's a higher, uh, a part of you is in them and a part of them is in you. That's, that's the twin flame. That's the concept anyway, how, how it is here in the, in the after. And okay, so talk about soulmate then. So there's a difference. So what's the, what's the definition of soulmate in your perspective now from the afterlife? Well, many. You mate many times, don't you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I knew he was going to totally be all Mr. Sexy because he, he, he's all about that sensual energy vibration, which is why women tend to really love you because you have this sensuality about you. It kind of brings in divine feminine, brings in divine masculine. You know, it's totally this, you're like this rod of Shakti life source energy from women, which is funny i think it's funny because i don't see you that way but i understand the energy of that activating that root chakra the sacral chakra you know just i mean hello pelvis hips all that you know and boy could move let's be clear you could move you had incredible dance skills so so talk to us about soulmates talk to us about that what's that so we can have many mates as you said so I understand what this is, but I'm trying really hard not to say my, what I, how I talk to people about this when they ask in session, but you, you tell us what this is. Soul to soul. It's, it's as simple, as simple as that. Connection. It can be friends. It can be lovers. It can be um, grandparents or children or friends or significant others. The term significant other is kind of fascinating, isn't it? It is. So it is, yeah, a significant other. So who's significant to you? There's many, right? But your other, the other part of your significance, is that what it means? Is that kind of what soulmate is? No, he says, nah, that would be more, a little more twin flame. Uh, maybe, we, maybe we did a new one. No, he says, no, nah, 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 nah. significant other. The person that you find most important to you at your life at this time, he says, that's temporary. That's the nature of things, it's just temporary, it's just words. Okay, so soulmate. So is it possible then to have more than one mate in our lifetime? You just said yes, clearly, with your description of mating. <laughs> but it's not about sex or reproduction, soulmate. It's about something else. Talk to us about what soulmate is about for us. What does that mean for us as people or as spirit? He says, well, it means familiarity, something that um, you feel that's familiar to you. And so it's a, a reuniting, a reunion. You know, someone that you haven't seen for a long time and you see them and it's like, then you jam out and it's great. You have this great jam session, but you don't get to see them very often. But when you do, it's just party. That's what soulmate is. Ah. So are soulmates positive relationships? Or can they be relationships that aren't maybe so positive? Both. He says, oh, both. Because you remember, he said, you gotta remember, people are different. When you come in, you have a different point. And when you say different point, do you mean like purpose? Yes, uh, yes, yes. You have a different point, like you're focusing on something else. It's different. It might not be the same in another lifetime. But when you connect with that soulmate, they provide to you that our, our experience, opportunity, lesson, lesson or message that you need. And it might not be a good thing because you might not want to hear it. And it might be through difficulty. He says it might be through fighting or struggle. And he shows me like, um, he shows me relationships that when you have um, soulmate connection with people, it doesn't mean you necessarily love them and they're so loving to you and they love you and they're your cheerleaders. He's showing me they might not be your fans. They might be a random stranger and it might be a, an attack situation or situation where, you know, there's, there's abuse or violence or even just degrading, even just, um, even just, that sounds horrible to say it that way, but even just someone that randomly, you know, says something mean to you, you know, it, it could be any one of those things. So soulmate are people that we, we have agreements with, sort of. Mm -hmm. Unspoken, yes, unspoken. 
So they come in human form, so it affects us in human life, our human life experience, but our soul recognizes the truth of that or the meaning, the deeper meaning of it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's a thing, he says, that's a thing. You gotta trust, trust your soul. You know, trust, you, you gotta trust yourself and nobody does. He says, nobody, like who does? Who does that? Nobody does it 100% of the time or you wouldn't even be here. Let's be honest, you wouldn't be here. That's one of the commonalities. Those are one of the commonalities that people come in and, and want that experience. That's why you're in relationship. But, but the goal is to find the twin flame, which you don't always find. He says, you don't, which doesn't always happen in your life. It just doesn't, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't mean you give up and you don't have love. It just means you don't, it doesn't, uh, okay, so is it like a fate destiny thing? It doesn't line up. It wasn't supposed to line up. It wasn't supposed to happen. He says, no, it's not like that. There's a lot of things that have to, that have to be set up. He's showing me kind of set up like cosmically. I don't know how to explain it. There's a lot of things that have to be set up in order for the, the unification of a, a twin flame to occur. So is that something that's written in an agreement before we incarnate, like that we're gonna connect? He says, not, oh, this is interesting. I didn't know this. This is a rigid eye, I didn't know this. He says, not usually. He says, not usually. Not from my, not from what I know. He says, not from my knowledge. So one person might have a path though that's charted to want to include their twin flame, but the twin flame also has to have agreement that that's gonna happen, but that doesn't necessarily mean it will happen. So why doesn't it happen then? So that's not fated or destiny. He says, because there's a lot of different things that come into play. And you, he says, you have to remember, you got your mind, your brain messes everything up. It really changes things for you. And you can go left instead of right, and then, yeah, but, okay, so, okay. There's a lot of choreography, it looks like. I'm gonna say that, that's a good word, huh? He's like, oh, so yes, yes, yes. He said, so you might need a saxophonist, but you don't get the one you, you wish you could have or the one you think would be perfect, but you get, you get another one that's great, does a fantastic job and surprises you and brings a great deal of, of contribution and value. That's what, that's what it's like, it's like that. Okay, well, but if, if both of the souls, our intention is to connect with each other, this twin flame is to find each other, then how can that just not be overridden and not happen? Like that's supposed to happen, so it's gonna happen. He says, because you have choice, you have choice. And anywhere along the life path they experience, you can change your mind. You can adjust the course of things or the fate of things. It may be that, he's showing me, it may be that your twin flame dies. They decide to leave the earth. Okay, so if they do that, then if, is, isn't it possible that they could incarnate again and be part of your life? So like they could be your grandchild or they could be your own child, or they could be your neighbor, or that kind of thing, or somebody that you meet, that you, a, a coworker, and you just connect with, and you go off and start your own business together. So twin flame, let's be clear, twin flame and soulmate doesn't have to be romantic. It doesn't have to be a sexual, uh, let's reproduce kind of relationship. It doesn't have to be um, a dating situation, a spousal situation, a, a, a boyfriend, girlfriend kind of thing, a girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend kind of thing. It doesn't have to be that. It can just be a relationship that holds love and honors the aspect of love. But in order for that to occur, you've got to have trust of self. So you've got to have trust and love in order to experience the, particularly the twin flame energy. Is that accurate? Right on. He says, right on. You got it. He says, it's complicated. He says, I don't expect people to understand it. It's complicated, but you want to talk about it, so we're going to talk about it. Yes, I do. Did you find your soulmate in this lifetime? As Prince Rogers Nelson, did you find your soulmate? He said, yes. Well, technically you had many soulmates, so I guess you found a lot of them. <laughs> hmm. I think I'm funny. I know some of you probably don't think I'm funny, but I'm enjoying this. This, this is enjoyable to me. <laughs> did you find a twin flame? He says, no. Oh, this is so sad. Oh, jeez, Louise. I know Prince pretty well from the afterlife. And we're friends, so I understand the depth of what he just shared with me. I'm really cautious about sharing it. He says, it was my son. 
any one of you who have ever lost a child, whether it's through miscarriage or missed opportunity, let's say that, or it's a tough thing, isn't it? So your twin flame was your son. Yes. And are you together then in the afterlife? He says, ah, nah, he's back. He's like, ah, oh, nah, he came back. He says, but we were together for a time. You know, he said, I always believed we would be reunited, you know, reconnected. But he says, ah, oh, nah, he's back now. He wanted to come back after we were able to, it looks like they come together and they're together for maybe a month or two and then all of a sudden he's back. Interesting. A couple months. He's like, Bridget, like three months. Okay, yeah, there's some time there, you know. I'm like, okay. In human terms, you know. I'm like, yeah. Timing is really a weird thing, isn't it, in human terms? It's so, it really is. It really is. Hard to explain. That one is a good whole video in and of itself. That was really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I think the intimacy of that really speaks to the energy of what the afterlife can help us with in our own human lives, you guys. The whole point of these conversations, as you know, because I say it all the time, is to inspire your spirit and fill you with hope. And we do that by having these conversations so that you can see how incredible your life is and understand some of the craziness that happens, the crazy relationships you have and the weird people that are brought into your life or why maybe understand a little bit, just a tiny little bit more about why horrible things can happen. And to allow yourself the opportunity then to step right back into your life and at any moment, regardless of what has happened in the past, whether it was this morning, last night, or 35 years ago, etc. You see, who you are today, step right back into your life, engage, connect, and choose to be here fully. Because this is your life, right, Prince? This is your life, right? He's like, this is your life this is your life so live it just live it thank you so much for watching this channel with prince rogers nelson in the afterlife where we talked about soulmates and twin flames and interesting dialogue and conversation go ahead and leave your comments below if you know a prince fan make sure you share this video with them definitely share it with them. And remember, there's a whole playlist. You can go do some binge watching or binge listening if you need a prince, a uh, little prince connection there. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, thanks, Prince, for being here. Appreciate it.